Uh, in this tutorial, I will be covering our second project, which is creating a minimal color movie poster. And I will be posting an assignment sheet that will be in our learning path. And in that assignment sheet, it'll give you more in-depth instructions on creating our poster. But also, there will be a link to my Pinterest board here for minimal color art. And the first thing you're going to need to do is do some research on minimal color art and minimal color movie posters. Uh, once you go to this Pinterest board, you'll see a lot of these uh, posters I pinned. Also, you'll notice that they're not all posters for book, for movies, okay? Some of these are actually book cover designs. Uh, some of these are just actual minimal color art. Because I've given this project, as far as doing minimal color, for a lot of different assignments in some of my other classes. And this is a great resource for that. Uh, anyway, once, you have once you've done your research here, you need to think about what movie you're going to be designing your poster for. And you're going to need to do some sketches. You're going to need to do six sketches. I will supply this page uh, for you to print out, but some of you may not have a printer. Uh, so what you'll need to do is you'll need to draw out rectangles that are three by four inches. So three inches wide by four inches high. And you will need to be drawing in these rectangles uh, and treat them as a portrait format so that you're going to be drawing your sketches this way, not landscape wise, for your poster design. All right. Now you'll need to design six sketches. Uh, it could be all for the same uh, movie or you can try to experiment with some different movie posters, okay? Movies for your designs. Um, anyway, it may take you more sketches to create the six sketches because one of the things you'll need to do is probably is make some, some thumbnails. Now this is my sketch process that I'm showing you and this is the sketch process that most professionals do and that is when we get an assignment or we're working on a project, we first create thumbnails. And these are small little sketches that we do in our sketchbooks. And so this, these are two little pen and ink drawings I did in my sketchbook. Uh, this was for the initial poster design and then this was just kind of clearing up and, and defining what, that, what was gonna go on in that design. And then this is my final drawing, okay? So once you get approval on one of your sketches, um, you may need to refine it more, okay? Because I'm looking at composition and layout in your sketches, but um, you know you may need to go in and refine more. And the most important thing is that if you're going to refine it more, you want to do it to scale if possible. And the size that we're going to be doing our movie poster is actually relatively small. We're going to be doing it six by eight inches okay now one of the great things about illustrator is illustrator is not dependent upon resolution so therefore we can create a movie poster design that's six by eight inches and if we were ever to need needing to print it full size we can just scale it up with no issues okay and that's a great thing about working in illustrator is that you can you can create an illustration the size of a postage stamp and blow it up to the size of a billboard and it will and it will retain its resolution okay so anyway the, once you get in there and start refining or even doing your sketches you should look for picture reference okay this is one of the things i always do i'll come up with an idea thumbnail wise and since I'm working off the top of my head, I'm, I'm working pretty fast when I'm doing these thumbnails. That's why they're kind of rough. And then when I do my finished sketch, I kind of go in here and I, and I look at a uh, picture reference, okay? I always go onto Google Images and I use my phone or if I'm do designing my uh, uh, final sketch, I sometimes use Procreate and that's what this was created in, Procreate, because I have an iPad Pro. But what the great thing is, I could go to Google Images, download these to my images, and then place them into uh, Procreate and, and refine my drawing, okay? As you can see here, I actually have a lot more references on these cars, so it really helped me to define what the car would look like, okay? So, so once you 
once you are prepared, once you have a sketch approved, and once you're ready to begin building your poster, you're going to need to place it. And so first thing we'll do is we'll place it just like we did with exercise two. And that is we're going to go to file and place. And here is my sketch. And we're going to place it as a template. Okay. Now my thing is going to be a little smaller because I actually drew it smaller. The other thing too is my document here, which I have set up, it's set to points, okay? So when you create a new document, you can set it for inches, but in case you click OK before setting that up, there is always another way to change it, okay? So in document setup here, this is up under file and new, in case you did not set up a, a, a document that had inches, we can change it to inches here, okay? And what we want to do is we're going to actually, let's see what the size of this is this is four and a quarter by six inches so that this is the size I actually did my finished drawing at well this needs to be six by eight okay so I'm just gonna unlock my template because the template is usually comes in locked so I'm unlocking it for a second here and I'm going to just click on the image and up in here in the control panel we can change our width to six now we want before we change it make sure that we can strain the the height and width here Make sure that chain there is not broken, okay? We don't want that. So we just type in 6, and we click over here, and it will change it to 8, all right? So this will be the actual size of our design here. So once we do that, then we can lock it. So one of the things you... Now, if you've, you're scanning it in, and you don't... Um, your sketch, you know, maybe you use Cam Scanner, and maybe it's... It scanned it, but it's not quite six by eight inches. Then what you can do is you can do this. Okay, let me go back here for a second. I'm going to undo. All right. So let's say that you don't know what the size of your sketch is. Well, you can always just begin. And what I mean by that is I placed I placed the template in there. On layer one, I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm just going to click here, and I'm going to click a rectangle and make it six by eight inches. Okay. And it's already in there, so I'll just click OK. All right, now, let me place that where I need to in the middle here, okay? We'll change the color in just a moment. Right now, it's a white box. If we want to, we can actually put, you know, a fill of white, a stroke of black, but we're going to change all that in just a moment. But what we can do is we can go to outline mode, and we talked about this in the exercise, where you hold down the command key and click on the I to toggle to outline mode. And then I'm going to unlock my template layer, and I'm just going to move my template in place, and I'm just going to scale this thing up, okay? And so that we'll actually fill that. And so that's that's another way we can make sure that our finished sketch that we're scanning in and placing in will be the size that it needs to be, okay? So I'm going to lock that again, all right? And then let's go back here for a moment. So So first of all, this will be our sky, okay? Because, you know, this is going to be a background rectangle we're going to use as our border, but it's also going to be our sky because we're going to build this much like we did our exercise. And so for our sky, we can fill it with, you know, let's say I'm going to fill my sky with 25% black, okay? I'm going to put a gradient in that later. But anyway, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to just click on the command key and click on this I so we can go and start building this. So, you know, depending upon how your drawing is, there is no really right or wrong uh, place to begin. You just need to think in terms of how you're going to end up building it, okay? So, like, I'm going to be building the ground here. You know, I can quickly build that and we'll build it on the same layer here. And we can also use uh, different layers if we need to. All right, I just wanted to check this background thing and the background rectangle actually had a stroke of white so I'm taking that off here okay all right so for our ground we can make the ground maybe a shade darker or a shade lighter depending on, on what we want to do here but I'm gonna make it a shade darker for the moment and we'll make it 40 okay and let's take off that stroke we don't want any strokes on these things because if you take a look We'll go click here, click back here for a second here um, at our minimal color art posters. 
you know, most of these don't have strokes. You know, some do have a few strokes here and there, but a lot of this is just all shapes, okay? And that's why I want you to start looking at this stuff. Now, you know, you might find something like this where there is some outline involved, okay? And that's, and, and but keep that in mind, because you can use outline. You just don't want to make it an, an, the entire thing an outlined image, because as you can see, most of these are all just shapes, okay? So let's let's go back here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ground here and crop it. And as in our exercise, I'm going to hold down my shift key, select both shapes, and do shift command A, or shift A, that is, or shift M. Excuse me, shift M. I apologize. Uh, shift command A is select all. Anyway, I'm going to do shift M. That that turns our on our um, shape builder tool, which is this right here, okay? And then I'm going to click on the alt key, and I'm going to delete what's sticking out, much like what we did to crop off those shapes that were coming outside in the exercise. All right, let's go back here, and let's think in terms of you know what we could build next. Let's say we build this mountain back here, and as we trace around things, we can always improve it because you know our sketch, our drawing is just a guide. You know, there's always room for improvement when you're working in Illustrator, but it's very hard to work in Illustrator and just create an image without a template. So that's why we we always do a drawing first, and then we scan that drawing in, and then we use it as our template, okay? So let me just continue here. We'll go down. All right, so you may ask, why did I go below the ground? You know? Uh, we're going below the ground because we want to overlap our shapes, okay? So that there are no gaps or white areas or anything in between them. So let's take this mountain. We'll crop it using our background shape. So we'll hold down shift key, select both of those. And again, I'm using shift M to bring up my shape builder tool very quickly and hold down the alt key, okay? Now what I would do is I would move this back. And one quick way to move it back, because it's sandwiched in between the two things, is, is I showed this, this in the exercise, but I'm going to do uh, Command X. So it just cuts it. Then I'm going to select the background rectangle and do uh, Command F, or, all right, or Control F. And what that does is we'll paste in front. And so that's a quick way to move things around here, all right? So let me build this other shape over here, and then we'll just keep building. I'm not going to build the whole thing. Because as you saw, I have it all built already. But I thought I would build part of it just to show you how to go about building your illustration for your book cover, okay? I mean, for your for your poster design. Sorry about that. I had book cover on the brain there. So, you know, let's go out here. There we go. Let's go. And then once we finish drawing our shape, just like in the exercise, we hold down the Command key, click on this I in Layer 1. All right. We're going to go get our direct selection tool, select that, select the background shape, and then shift M. You know, that is if you have any shapes that are going outside your border. Otherwise, you could just kind of build and move them where they need to be. Now, I could move this again, all right? Or one thing I could do is I could click on this shape because there's, there's multiple ways to move things. You can always use this, which I rarely use, just because. Uh, once you start building, see, I just moved that shape up. And this, these are sub-layers, okay? They're buried within the layer. So for every shape you build on a layer, it creates a sub-layer. Well, this works well in the beginning, but, you know, in some instances, I may have 50 shapes on a sub-layer. That's why it's good to know keyboard shortcuts. And I'm going to keep going over these keyboard shortcuts as, as I build this thing, okay? So let's continue on. And let's see here. I'm going to build, let's say, the lighter shapes here. Like I said, I can zoom in if I want to, but, you know, this drawing is still, even though it's more refined, it's still, it's still kind of in the rough stage. And so what I'm doing is I'm just tracing out, thinking about where I want the lighter values and kind of tracing around these shapes so that basically in the end, let's see here, let's 
go back out. I, I'm going back out and back in. All right, because I'm going to use the original mountain shape to crop with. That's why I'm doing this, okay? And so let's go outside of it, and let's take a peek. And you can always see it like this if it helps, okay? And as you can see here, I need to move this a little bit because this is going to crop off weird here. Okay, let's go back to outline mode. I'm going to turn my template back on. But let's go back to preview mode, that is. So we'll hold down the command key, click on the I. All right, now we want this shape to be lighter in value. It's already lighter in value. Um, we might want to use this value. Okay, we could always darken these. And it's really best to work all in grayscale because it just speeds up our process. We'll color this thing afterwards. And so I, every shape, Every shape that went outside there, I just sort of went past there on purpose because I'm going to use this mountain shape to crop with. So I'm going to do Shift M once I get those selected, and then I'm just going to delete. So this makes it very quick and easy to build things, okay? And if I was going to make this shape a different value, then we might want to bring this to the front. And remember, one quick way to bring it to the front is a keyboard shortcut, which is Shift Command Left Bracket. But if you don't know where that, if you don't know that keyboard shortcut, go up under Object and Arrange, and you will see your keyboard shortcuts. Okay. Whoops. Sent, I sent that to the back. So let's bring it forward. There we go. All right. So let's continue on. We'll build another shape here. Actually, we'll, might as well just build these two shapes. And we'll do it like this. So this is behind a telephone pole, so I don't know quite what I'm building here. But I can go up and around and build this shape. And let's take a peek at it. You know, after I build each shape, it's a good idea to always see it. And so therefore, I want to take this, and I want to put this in front of that shape. So one quick way to do this is I can cut it, Command-X, and then do Paste in Front. So I select the shape I want to paste it in front of, and then do Command F. And this is a very quick way to move things around, okay? Because you could send backwards and bring forwards and all that, that. But that, if you've got a lot of shapes, that could take a while. And this is a little quicker process here. So we're going to build this shape next. Hold down my... I'm going to use my mountain shape to crop it with, all right? And then do, so I'm selecting both of those. Do Shift M to bring up my shape builder tool. Hold down the Alt key, and that becomes the my sign, and then we'll click that, all right? So I have this part built, all right? Now, so let's continue on. We'll build the road, okay? And the road, we're just checking to see where it would go to, all right? I'm just going to try my best to line it up. Uh, afterwards, we can always move these points. Okay. And anything that goes outside the border, we're just going to go move outside the border. Uh, now, mind you, we're going to have our car overlapping this. So we don't have to be so exact. The most important thing is, is these lines correspond where we want the road to be. Okay. And as far as where these points in, they could be, you know, lower we want them to be okay because the car is going to overlap that so let's take this shape and this shape you know select them both and then do shift M and then crop okay we're gonna do another shape here see this is this is actually fairly fast once you get going and like I said I don't plan on building the whole thing but I thought I'd build enough so you get a sense of how to build your project okay so this will be the white line now if I don't, you know, if I say I wanted to make that not totally uh, white, say we make that 10%, then we'd want to crop that. Because later on, we're going to color everything. You know, we're going to, we're going to color everything, and so we want to make sure everything is cropped nicely, all right? So let's continue on. Now, what I've got going on here is I've got some telephone poles. Oh, I've got the clouds, too. So you might as well do the clouds on the same thing. And so the background is going to have quite a few shapes here. All right, so I went to, back to outline mode. I'm going to go, and I'm just going to... I like to start outside sometimes like this. So I'll, I'll just kind of do this. And I'm going to... 
I'm not killing all the, the handles like I usually do because I want this shape to be smoother. So as I showed in the exercise, you can always kind of go around here when you're doing a very curvy things like this. You can always go around and keep the handles and just sort of next point you move the handle. Now I'm going to kill that handle there because I want to go down. And let's go out right here and we'll curve it. And we'll try to curve this inwards. Now, if it's not going to go right, so let's zoom in just a little bit here, okay? I'm going to have to get my pen tool and click on this because otherwise it would not be linked up there. You know, it would I'd be starting a new path and it wouldn't it would be open. Okay, so I'm just kind of working on this a little bit better here. There we go. Now let's curve that and then we can just kind of continue curving things out until they curve out side like that. All right, now let's zoom out. And I'm keeping this at that 10% because like I said, we could color our clouds. Our clouds may not be white, okay, when we go into coloring. And notice this here. So this needs to be this needs to be in front of the background shape. And so, like I said, one of the quickest ways to move this I'm going to do is, is I'm going to select the shape with the main selection tool so I'm not selecting just anchor points. Okay. I'm going to do Command X, select the background rectangle for the sky, and do Command F, and that will paste it there. Okay. Now let's continue on. Nope, I'm going to have to kill that handle because that was going to go out too far. Now let's go in here like this and see what this looks like. Yeah, there, that's going to be nice and smooth. You just got it take it takes a while to get used to the pen tool, you know? And the more you use it, the better you get at it. Of course, as I said, if you got you know, if I if I was using my uh, Cintiq pen, I would be using my pencil tool. And if you've got a Cintiq pen, or if you've got a wake-up tablet, you can always try that because sometimes it's faster, okay? All right, so now I've got my sky. So let's let's pick a new layer. And on this layer, we're going to build the telephone poles and the shadow for the car and maybe the cactus, okay? I don't know. If, like I said, I'm trying to speed up here, but some of these tiny details take a while. And I have it already built. So let me just, you know what, I'm going, to use, I'm going to use my pen tool. I was going to use my rectangle tool, but I'll just use my pen tool for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go straight across here and straight up. Now, in my drawing, you can see it's slightly curved, but it's kind of hard to see. So that's why I'm just going straight right now. And I'm going to pull this point out. And the other thing, notice this. The selection of this layer is this awful green. And it's so hard to see sometimes. So I'm going to double click layer three here, my, my second layer, my layer three. I don't know why, but anyway, I'm going to double click it. And we're, let's change this color to maybe, I don't know, brick red. Maybe that will help us see it better. Okay. At least I can see it better. Now, the other thing, too, is if, if, you're, if your drawing is too dark, you can double click your template layer. And we could fade this back to maybe 30. Okay. I'm just trying to get over there. There we go. Three. And see, that helps a lot. So anyway, I was just going to come in here and show you that I was going to take my pen tool here. Make sure I'm back up on layer three here. I'm going to add that point and I'm going to pull it up. But then I'm going to use one of the tools up under the pen tool. And that is the anchor point tool. And it's actually Shift C is the keyboard shortcut. So I could do Shift C. And then I'm going to just click on this point. Now, right now, it's it's doing this. So I'm going to have to untangle it. But that's how I can get a curve there. Now, I'm using my space bar and grabber hand to move down. All right, now let me get the pen tool again. 
We'll click there. I'm going to switch to A. I just hit the A key because that is keyboard shortcut for the direct selection tool. We'll pull that down. And then we can get this tool. And maybe we might not need it down that far, actually. We'll just pull it out that low. Come back and get this anchor point tool and curve that out. All right. And so let's zoom back up. Let's go back up here. I'm just kind of taking my time here. And we can actually, you know, if we want this to be more like the drawing, we can move this over. All right, we can move that over. All right, there we go. All right, now let's go and build another shape here. And we're going to need to preview this. Because right now I'm working in outline mode and I'm looking at my color. And let's go back to outline here. So let's go here. All right. Yeah, these are gray. So let's make this black. Make both these shapes black for the moment. All right. Then we're going to go in and might as well just, if I can see it, like I'm seeing it this now, I can go up here and just sort of, and I'm going to make it a little bit better. Oops. That's one of the reasons why if you do Command Y here, whoops, Command Y, there we go. Then I can see my template. All right. Now let's, now, both of these shapes are, one is one shape, one is the other. Really, I, I want it to be mainly like this, because this was my drawing. I was, you know, and that's the thing. You can always improve your drawing. You know, that's what, something we talked about with the snowman project. And so I'm just going to use an ellipse here, and then let's zoom in here. And I'm going to make this shape, because I've seen this shape before in real life. And... Uh, I know kind of what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to add a point there and add a point here. And then let me see here. I'm going to actually just do this kind of thing. Yeah. Kind of makes it a little, if you look at it, once you see it and done, it's kind of like a, a, a flying saucer shape. There we go. I'll just move that in. And it sort of sits on top of something else. And so we could just, oh, I can use a rectangle if I want to. I was using the ellipse, but we could just, whoops. Yeah, I just want to build another shape here, about like this. And so let's take a look here. We'll do Command Y as our keyboard shortcut. And we'll take a look and see what the shape looks like. All right, and see if I like it. Now, maybe I might want to make this shape a little more, less wide, because I'm seeing how big it is. Okay, maybe we want to make this shape a little less wider too, okay. And like I said, I've, I've done a lot of telephone poles. And these things kind of look, they, they look a little different. I'm just sort of stylizing this. Oops. All right, now I can group that so it becomes one shape. Or I've got my sh Pathfinder tools out here. Or I can use my Shape Builder tool. So I can use my Shape Builder tool and do like this, and that'll make it one shape, okay? Or I can come over here. Now, mind you, I had my Pathfinder tools out. It's up under Window. Here's Pathfinder. And the first Pathfinder tool is this, is Unite, all right? So, or I could have grouped it. You know, I think I did, I think I grouped it in the other way. Now, I'm zooming out for a minute just to see. Yeah, that might be a little too big. So, we'll, I'm going to scale it down a little bit. Maybe make it that size. Right, let's zoom out again. All right. So once I get to where I like it, then what I want to do is I'll just I'll just reflect it, you know. Or I could copy it. That's the other thing too. I could just do this. And all I do is I start moving it, and I held down my Alt key, and I'm just quickly copied that. Okay. So again, what I did was I I take it, start moving it, and before I let go of the mouse. I hold down my Alt key, and you can see that second arrow there. There's two arrows, and that lets me know I'm making a copy of it. Okay, and so that was much easier doing it that way. All right, now my telephone pole is leaning. Let's turn off our second, our first layer there. All right, so we're going to take all these. This is the only shapes on this layer. We can group them, okay, and then we'll just take it back here. And copy this again, holding down the Alt key. And then we're just going to make it smaller. Okay. 
So I'm just going to make it smaller. So a lot of times, if you've got elements you want to copy over and over again, you can just, you know, instead of redrawing it, instead of redrawing the telephone pole, we'll just make a new one. Okay, and we can actually, you know, scale it to the way we want it to be. Um, now, mind you, it's not touching the ground where it needs to be, but that's okay. Because, you know, we're going to have the car there. And I'm just going to pull that up and see what that looks like. Or I can always just, I can select these lower points here if, if I'm really being picky. And whoops. And kind of toggle those. And I'm starting to move that up. But let me show you what I'm doing here. Just so you can see. All right. So I'm going to select over with this and then just move both of these up. Okay. It's moving three points up at once. There we go. All right. So it doesn't matter because the car's got to overlap it. I'm just showing you how to move things. All right. Now let's continue on. And like I said, we can move this over just a little bit. I'm just using my arrow keys to move this with. Okay. And I might as well build this shape here. And so what I'm going to do is let me get my pen tool. That, and what shape I was talking about was my, my shadow for my car. It kind of does a curvature like this. And it goes this way. And then maybe curve that just a little bit perhaps. We got to think about what the kind of shadow the car would cast. All right. Um, we don't want this black, so I'm going to take it down to maybe 85. Okay. And then um, this shadow shape, too, will go off the page. And I said two because we're going to crop it. Okay, so we're going to take it and we're going to have to use this layer. Okay, and if we need to, we can turn on preview mode for that layer. And then click. And then we can click on the ground. So I'm going to do shift M and get this. All right. So anyway, let's get that done. Okay, now we can build another layer when we start building the car. All right. So I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm not going to build everything. And mind you, this needs to be moved behind. So if I know that this is on that layer, I can do shift command um, left bracket, which is a keyboard shortcut to send it back, because that was the that is you know if that if that was on layer one, I wouldn't want to do that. But since this is on this layer, this layer three, or we can actually title this. You, know, you can go in here and call this telephone. Poles, you know, you can name your layers. This could be background. Okay. Uh, anyway, layer four here. Let's turn off these layers and let's start to build the car. And I'm going to actually start off with a rectangle shape for this. And let's go to outline mode. Okay. I'm going to use my pen tool and we're going to put an anchor point there. And yeah, I'm waiting for the smart guides to show me where I'm at. Okay. And we're going to pull one side out like this. Okay. And might as well pull the other side out. And we're going to try to make it somewhat. All right. Now we're going to try to make it somewhat symmetrical, is what I was going to say. Anyway, I want to cut in here so I'm just going to build a shape to do that with this will speed up my process okay so let's go and preview this all right so this is going to be a lighter shape we'll make it somewhat lighter for now we'll make it more lighter later on this shape I want to actually use again so because I want to I want to actually reflect it so I can use it to cut cut out this shape all right so what we'll do is we'll take this shape, select it, and then we'll go to our reflect tool. And I'm going to kind of aim at the middle here. All right. And then let's, we're previewing it. It's not reflecting it because it's, ref, but there we go. We'll see it when we change that to horizontal. All right. So that actually flipped it horizontally. And then we can just do copy. Okay. So we'll just do that. 
And then we'll take both. Now let's go back to preview mode. Hold down the command key. All right. And I'm just going to take this shape. We're going to take all three of these shapes. Do Shift M. Oops. Missed this part down here. And let's just use that to cut that out with. Okay. Now the other thing too is when I was building this, you know, I wanted these to be rounded. Well, since this started off as a rectangle, if I go to my direct selection tool, notice something. Notice these little points here. Now, if you're having a hard time seeing that, let me maybe change this to a darker color here. We'll change it to burgundy and see see if that will show up better. Eh, didn't change it yet at all. All right, so anyway, what I'm pointing out is let's turn off my template for a moment. Notice those little circles there? They're on each one of those. They're, they're actually all linked together. And if we start to move one, it will it will move every one of them accordingly, and we can actually curve. Okay, we can make a curve depending on how we how steep we want that curve to be, and and that's because I drew this shape starting with a rectangle. If I just pen tooled it, I wouldn't have that option there. Okay, so now I got that shape. And let me just kind of continue. I, I wanted to show you that part. And I'm going to just, I'm, I'm, like I said, I, I have all this built. So I might as well just sort of, let's see here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use my rectangle tool again. Yeah, okay. And just build another rectangular piece here. And this will... And just remember, you want to overlap your shapes. So like this shape I'm building, and what I'm doing is I'm just simply using a rectangle to start with, and then I'll drag this over here. These don't have to be perfectly lined up because they're back. They are actually going to be over, overlapped by that last piece afterwards. And I'm just moving that, and then I'm going to use my convert anchor point tool and just curve that a little bit like that. It curves out, okay. And then we'll do the same thing over here. Whoops, got to just change the direction when you're using that uh, anchor point tool. All right, now now let's go to preview and let's see what we got here. So so I want to make this shape a little darker. Okay, we want to make all of our shapes the same value of darkness. Okay. And so let's send that to the back, okay? And so that's how we, you know, set, that's what I'm talking about with overlapping, okay? So let me make this part right here. I'm going to just pin tool this. Okay. And let's, what, let's change. Actually, I'm going to make this down here a shade darker. Maybe we'll go to 50. And then this shape uh, we'll send to back also. We'll do shift command, send to back. And then we can go in and see, yeah, okay, there we go. And just use my pen tool and we can improve some of our drawing. Now, what it did there, it just added that, added anchor point to that shape because that shape was selected, All right? So I just, I just did command Z. I'm gonna do a shift command A, so that deselects or you can get the selection tool and just click off of it. All right, now I'm back on this path, but in, when I click this time, it will not add an anchor point, okay? Just to make sure. There we go. So it did not add an anchor point, and we're just making these little kind of triangular shapes. And again, I go up to here. I'm not, I don't have to redraw this. That's why I'm going past here. I'm, and that's what, what what I want everyone to think about is when you're building an illustration in Illustrator, to think about overlapping your shapes. So now let's take these two shapes, select this color, okay? And then if anything, we'll bring this to the front. And therefore that will overlap, okay? Now we'll do another thing here. We might as well do the tire. And then we're just gonna move along because I think I've got most of it all built out, but I figure, you know what? I'm, going to sh I'm just showing you some sh shortcuts and different things I've done to build this with because I want this to be better than my drawing. 
you know, I want this to look better and not to have all the same, you know, little, little, um, little issues because I mean, you know, it was, it was a drawing. It was done in Procreate, but I didn't use any guides. I just sort of drew it out. Okay. So anyway, let's just, yeah, there we go. I'm going to make our curve there. Come over here. Oops, going to just curve this here. And if that's too much, then let's just take these points, put them together. There we go. Hold, I'm holding down my shift key so this goes straight across. All right. And I'm just trying to make a nice kind of shape here for this tire. Once I get the shape, okay, we're going to make that black. And see, the thing is, you know, a lot of students just don't think about overlapping. And that's why I'm doing this uh, demo here, this tutorial. We're going to send that to the back. Shift Command, left bracket, okay. And then what we'll do is we'll take that, we'll select it now. We'll use our reflection tool and... I'm looking to see if it'll give me any indication on one of these shapes here. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. If it doesn't, that's okay, because we can always move it. All we're wanting to do is reflect it, and we want to reflect it vertically like that, and so we'll just copy it, and there we go. And then we can move it a little bit better over. I was just seeing if I could get any assistance from my smart guides, okay? And so let's turn this on. You'll see how much I got built, okay? So actually I did a pretty good job with building a lot of stuff because if you go and you take a look at this one, you see the difference here, okay? So so I built actually quite a bit there. Um, anyway, to save time, we'll move, we'll move forward. So we wanna, first of all, we wanna build everything and then we wanna do our text. Now I actually chose a bunch of different fonts and I kind of narrowed it down. And the one you see now is the one I've chosen. But I originally started off with a font that looked like a typewriter. So it looks like uh, it's, it's typed out. Uh, then I cop And each, each time I did this, what I did, simply did was I just took the original design. I copied it like that. Turned it off. So remember, we went through that whole thing with the mummy. And what we did was, you know, we... We played around with the spacing, the kerning, the letting, the size, the hierarchy, and all that stuff. And that's how I did this. And so once you do that for your for whatever design you're going to do, then we can go through here quickly and scroll through and look for other fonts to use. Okay. And so you know maybe I might want the Arial Black. Anyway, I wanted for this one I wanted it to be a and that looks nice there. You know that's Bauhaus. I wanted it to be a serif font, right? And so you can see all these different variations of fonts. You know, maybe I could use that one. I think I might have used that one for one of mine. So anyway, that's how I did this. So that I would have one variation here, another variation there. That's that this font I downloaded from a site called Dafont, D-A-F-O-N-T dot com. And uh, I it's called Luckiest Guy. Okay, and then I came across this font, and I really like that. And one of the things I like about it is it ha kind of has that that uh, that kind of title look for for cartoons made by Warner Brothers, like the Bugs Bunny cartoons. They always kind of had these, like especially Sylvester and Tweety, those, those cartoons. They always kind of had these opening titles, and they had these kind of nice little fonts. And the and I like this font because if you look at the T. How it kind of mimics some of the shapes going on there, you know. It's it's a, it's very complementary to our design, and so that's why I've decided to use this font. Okay, so I actually put a gradient here, and I think this might be the only gradient I have in the whole thing. Okay, um, because when we use gradients, we want to be sparing with them. We don't want to use them in areas we don't need them. Okay, because a lot of times people overuse gradients but in this I wanted to have a gradient for the sky so I have a simple gradient if we look at our gradient tool you'll see it goes from 10% uh, black to 50% black okay all right so once we have everything 
one of the things you want to start doing is making sure all of your shapes, you know, have the same value. So this has 60, that has 60. Uh, I think this might have 60 down here, okay? So this will make it easy and fast to color. So the next step is we're going to actually bring in some images, much like this, okay? So that's, that's my color. So that's what we're shooting for, okay? So let's zoom out here a little bit. And let's make another layer, okay, above our, our title. And on this layer, we're going to go and place some of the images I've downloaded, okay? So let's go to, I know where it's located outside of here. So I actually went to the two-color uh, art um, board that I created, and I went to find these images and, and download the larger ones. And so we're just going to place them. We're not going to hit, hit link. We can't do template. It won't give us the option. And we'll just click one here and click one there and click one down here and click one there and click this one here. And then we're going to actually just play around with, with you know, putting these in and shrinking them down. They don't, they don't get in the way. We're going to take these outside the artboard. So these will all be on their own layer. I mean, they're on they're on a layer unto themselves. So basically, we can just turn these off. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start picking colors off. Okay, so I actually picked a lot of my colors from this one. And so what I was talking about was trying to keep all your values and your colors your values the same. See, I can change all these values. Now, let me double check here. Let me go to double click my magic wand. All right. I lowered my tolerance on my magic wand to two. And the way you do that is if you go over to your magic wand tool, you double click it, you'll get fill color. And I took it, it's usually set at 32. I set it down to two. So all these are going to be 60%. And so all I got to do is look for a color up in here. I may want to use like this, okay? Um, there's this color here I thought was better, okay? So this makes it very quick to color, okay? And let's click this color here. And maybe choose that, okay? Um, I'm going to click on this color here. And so there's quite a few that are that color. And all I'm checking, each time I do this, I want to make sure that my my black here, whatever the black was, is the same. If it has a question mark, it means that there's a color that's that's not right. And we're going to make this the darker brown off this, okay? You know, because we can always sample off over here, perhaps. You know, maybe there. But I like, I, but, you know, I kind of like maybe this for the moment, okay? There we go. And the other thing, too, is I was thinking of actually making this telephone pole go back a little bit more. So we'll go and make it another color. Just so it pushes it back like that, okay? Now let's go in here. And there's a lot of different values here. Let's let's get our magic wand to get their hair. And think about we want to make them a, make it a lighter color. So we might want to pick this color, okay, or this color. Alright, that got kind of pops it. Alright, now when we're doing our sky, since we've got our and we're almost well, let's finish coloring the car. We're so close to getting it all finished. You know, there's not much left. So let's get my magic wand. Uh, y is a keyboard shortcut, by the way. All right, so those were both the same color. And we might want to pick, let's zoom out here and see what we can pick off of this. Ooh, I'm wondering about trying this. See if that would work. Uh, hmm? I like that. All right, I like that, you know. I mean, you could try that, or like I said, we can go up here and try one of these, just to see. But yeah, I kind of like this. this, this color right here, all right? Or maybe we pick off something off the Lion King, maybe, maybe that color, all right? Yeah, I like that too. All right, so anyway, so you can play around here. Now let me get my magic wand again and select their necks, which are actually the same color as the license plate down in there. 
And so it's pretty dark. Well, maybe not choose that color. Or maybe the what color is purple? Let's see here. Yeah, I kind of like that. All right, I'm just like I said, I'm just playing around. We want this minimal color. Okay, so that's why I picked all these minimal colored posters to begin with. So I don't have to go through here and be thinking, okay, well, what color am I going to do here? All right, so this, so I picked up that, but I want to pick up, there we go. So that's the one I want to pick up there. And we might want to just make that the same as this, so that kind of pops it out. All right, so most, I think everything on the car is practically done. I'm zooming in here to see what we've got. All right, so let's do... For the glasses, we'll just pick a color back in here so it pops out, maybe like that. All right. Uh, we'll leave um, that. Well, actually, we can make that a really light color. Let's see what we've got here. Let me get my magic wand again and see here. All right, so, so this I want to change to zoom out here. Maybe, I was thinking of trying to get this really light yellow. There we go. Okay. And so maybe that might be the same color for the clouds. I don't know. We'll see. Click on both those clouds. We'll do that. There we go. I kind of like that. Now let's do the sky. We'll make that line for the road the same there. Okay. All right. Now let's go. We've got to change the color for this for our text. All right. So I'm going to make it that. But our sky, which is kind of cool. I kind of almost like it like that. But but anyway, we're going to do different versions. And so I'm going to change this gradient color to one of these colors. And I could change it to either that color or maybe this lighter color. There we go. And so what I'm doing is I'm on my gradient, gradient uh, tool here, or my gradient palette, that is. I'm just going to click the lighter slider. Okay, and that's that's what this thing is called, so slider, and and then I'm just going to click this eyedropper here, and then I can click, whoop, want well, to make sure we're on the eyedropper, and then we can click this light yellow, and so therefore we can we can color it like this. Okay, this is a little different from the one I colored, but this is how I colored it, and so what I did was, and this is what I what I would recommend is we can save it each time. And we want to make a few different versions. I've got four. So if you want to do four versions, that's fine. I'm not I'm not keeping you to that. I want at least two different versions, okay? And so these are the versions I came up with. This was my first one. Eh, I don't know. There's some things I like about that, but yeah, this one really does work. I toned down some of the colors, too. Uh, so that's my first one. Then this was my second one. Okay, and I was playing around with using more color. It's still kind of minimal, but I did use more color than, than normal. But then I went back and minimized the color again so that I was coloring the car and the cactus the same color. All right, and then I really like this color four here. You know, that one's that one I think is very nice. So if, if it was my pick on these for my own, I'd pick four and I'd pick the first one. Okay. And those would be the ones that, that are the strongest color scheme. And so, anyway, what you do is, once you do it in color, then you would just save as. And name it, you know, whatever, color two. Now, mind you, you need to put your names on these. So, like, if you were submitting this, this would be, uh, you know, Moyers, M-O-Y-E-R-S underscore there we go Thelma Louise color all right and then I'm going to save that to my desktop okay we're going to save it just to be safe as legacy okay click OK yes the other thing we want to do too is when you're sending this to me make sure you're outlining your text so like in this case here I am going to um, take my text and copy the layer like this and we did this with the mummy okay and we take this right here and then we go to type and we go to create outlines all right so now when you send that or i send that to somebody 
And if they don't have that font, then they will still be able to see it, okay? And I'm keeping the font up under there just in case I want to edit that later, okay? And we can turn this off or we can delete all that. We can delete our color things that we chose, but you know, I I usually embed these things because so, so they're not linked, so they should come through, but that will make your file larger. Um, but anyway, you know, you, you would do that, and then if you're gonna do a second one, we would go save as Thelma and Louise, Moyers, Thelma and Louise color two, and go from there, okay? So so it's very simple. And then you would submit your two best color ones, okay? So we want one that's really minimal color, and then it it could be another color scheme, like a blue color scheme, or as you saw what I did with these, I started playing around with different colors for different areas, and I simplified it again, and then finally I came across something I liked, all right? So that concludes our tutorial.